Thank you. Thanks. Um, it's my pleasure to be here. I, I really want to um, give acknowledgement to this organization. I've been a support group leader before for fibromyalgia, for migraine headache. I've, I've never um, been a support group leader for uh, Lyme disease, but I, I just really admire this group and, and um, am very grateful that you've asked me to speak. So um, it's very important for people to come together. Do I have to stay close to this? Okay. It's very important for people to come together and to share their, their stories and to share their uh, successes and their failures and so forth. Um, in my practice uh, for over 30 years of working with people with chronic pain and, and so forth, uh, I was the person that back 30 years ago, the doctors would send people to me because they had, they had run out of the meds didn't work, the, you know, the, the, the psychologist didn't work, the, you know, everything that they could think of, the physical therapy didn't work and so forth. And so I started to get patients who were very, very ill. And my methodology for using biofeedback was to, does everyone know what biofeedback is? I can explain a little bit. It's, it's the ability to, to use instrumentation such as, as heart rate variability or muscle uh, myotherapy, so, so looking at how tense your muscles are, or looking at your breathing patterns, or looking at your brain waves, and being able to say, you know, there's an optimal way that your body could function here, and we're gonna teach you how to let go of some of those old habit patterns, whether it be holding tension like this 24 seven, and just normalizing that, and being able to see on a computer screen when you do this, then that line or that graph goes down. And um, by teaching people how to self-regulate, then we could make changes in all kinds of things like tension headaches and uh, migraine headaches and Raynaud syndrome and other kinds of, of stress-related disorders. But I found that when people came to see me who were were uh, you would, you'd expect that someone who was coming to see a biofeedback therapist was someone who um, had a little bit of insight or some motivation into, you know, I wanna make some changes in my life. You know, I, th I think that, that there are some things that I can do in order to um, help myself to heal. Well, that wasn't the case. You know, people were coming to me desperate for help, desperate to, um, have some kind of an intervention that really made a difference for them. So eventually, and, and biofeedback does work, but it takes, some, it takes some going home and it takes some practice. And, it, and I could tell people that after three, um, or three weeks or four weeks that, that when you practice, it's just like, like meditation. If you do this, you will feel a difference. Well, that wasn't what people wanted to hear. They wanted to have something that would really, really impact them and influence them right now. Because what happens in the medical world, what, do you, what, what have we been programmed by the media and by pharmaceutical companies and so forth to say that, hey, there's something out there that's gonna make a big difference for you and all you have to do is swallow it and tomorrow and you'll sleep, right? Or your pain is going to be so much more manageable and so forth. So people were really looking for that, that more instant kind of, kind of relief. So um, it's a long story, but eventually I uh, was able to go to um, many different conferences in the holistic uh, field and found Alpha Steel. And I thought, hmm, we've got a simple, non-expensive electrotherapy device that can help people to feel better, sometimes within seconds and sometimes within just a few minutes and sometimes 20 minutes, but certainly within the 45 minutes to an hour that they were with me, that they would walk out of my office and feel much, much better. And I thought, wow, this is something that, that I really need to promote. I really need to get this 
into people's hands because once they felt better and they could see that there was, um, that their physiology would change to the point that they were starting to produce the neurochemicals that were beneficial to them and, and so forth, that they had hope. They had hope that, that maybe, maybe I can get better, right? Have you ever had that happen to you? Like, like, I don't know, you know, maybe the stars and the moon and everything lines up and all of a sudden you have one good day and you think, okay, this could be, this could be the start of something. I could have more good days. And um, so that's kind of my story in a, in a nutshell. I started to use this on my patients, uh, particularly my fibromyalgia patients, because again, there's not, really, there's not really a medicine that works for fibromyalgia, just like Lyme disease. There's not just one medication that's gonna help you to, to feel better. Um, so I started working with fibromyalgia patients. I started working with migraine patients. I started working with chronic pain patients. And by and large, they all got pretty much the same uh, results. So I'm here to, um, I started a, a, the company Begin Healing um, back in the early 2000s because I felt that as a practitioner, I could, I could influence one patient at a time, and I loved doing that. But it wasn't enough because there are so many people that are suffering out there that I thought I needed to spread the word. And so um, being a healthcare practitioner, being a registered nurse, I had no idea how to start a business. But eventually the word got out and um, I, we're at the point right now that, that um, I'm being asked to come to places like this. And we actually, we were in Minnesota Monthly um, our company was featured about a year ago in Minnesota Monthly, and now just in this issue of Lake Time Magazine, there's an article, if you'd like to take a look at it, on um, how we're helping people with, who are addicted to opiates to um, get pain relief and how to decrease their use of opiates. So um, we're, we're getting a little bit more well-known. Um, so I'm going to go through some slides so that you have an idea of what uh, this alpha stim is and, and what it is that can, can help with these conditions. So I'm using Dr. Marksberry's slides, and Dr. Marksberry is the um, Education and Research Director at Electromedical Products, and that is in Mineral Wells, Texas, and that is where the, um, the main office is. The alpha stim itself is manufactured here in the United States and in China. So Alpha Stim is um, the, the brand name. What we're doing um, with this device here, it's called the Alpha Stim Aid, is called cranial electrotherapy stimulation. So it's actually a brain stimulation. And the way that it works is that um, ear, ear clips, ear clip electrodes are put on the ears. And there's a waveform that goes actually from one earlobe to the other, and it, and it affects the, uh, primarily the limbic system in the brain, the reactive part of the brain, or the kind of primitive part of the brain. And um, it normalizes uh, brain activity. So what you do is you take these little electrodes out, you put some solution on them, you put them on the earlobes, and then you turn the machine on and you kind of ramp it up slowly until people feel a little bit like they're floating, or a little bit like they've had a glass of wine, or um, uh, the best way, the best explanation is a child that I had with cerebral palsy that said, oh, it feels like I'm on a swing. So you get that kind of floaty, like you're, like you're floating on a raft kind of thing. And um, that happens at a different current for everyone. So some people who are very sensitive, for instance, people who um, have difficulty with carnival rides or people who can't sit in the back seat of a car or in the front seat of a car. No, it's in the back seat um, because they have motion sickness. Um, those people are very sensitive and don't like that feeling. So you have it on a very, very small level and other people who really like that feeling will ramp it up so we always let people choose the um, comfort level for them 
and we put it on for 20 minutes to an hour. And um, it is studied, we've studied anxiety, depression, insomnia, and pain. So how effective is um, an electromedical device like this? And I'll give you, it looks like this, ear clips are, are so forth. And what the company did was um, they looked at what's called WebMD. Are you all familiar with that website? So uh, WebMD published some post-marketing surveys from pharmaceutical companies. And most of you are familiar with um, anxiety medicines like Xanax and, and Ativan and things like that. Well, they, the pharmaceutical company will call up the patient after a, a period of time and say, was that medicine effective for your anxiety? And they say either yes or no. So if you look at anxiety, um, for Xanax, 84% uh, of people said yes, it did, it did, it was effective for my, my anxiety, or it is effective, and with Ativan, 80%. Well, our company called up civilian and uh, the military, or um, the service member population and said, was the alpha stem effective for your anxiety? And 90% of the service member uh, population said that yes, it was. And 85% uh, of civilians said it was. So you can look down the list there. We just did a comparison. Okay, how does this work? I'm gonna show you some actual double-blind placebo-controlled studies. But I think that this is probably the most important um, slide that you can look at because this is using it as anybody would that we instruct them. You take it home, you use it to the level that feels appropriate for you, and you use it every day for 21 days. And then after that, if you, if you take a day off and you kind of have a slump, go ahead and use it every day for another uh, three weeks or four weeks, and then eventually taper your sessions so that you're doing it maybe three or four times a week. So that, that's, the, that's the dosage, that's the prescription. And you can see that, that uh, in every category, whether it's anxiety, insomnia, depression, pain, headache, we just really outperform pharmaceutical medications. And the other thing is, is, is that um, what comes along with taking a med? What do you hear on the, on the side effects, right? Um, basically, I'll go over it, but, but this has very few side effects. Uh, one out of 1,500 people will get a mild headache. It's self-limiting. If you turn the intensity down or you stop the treatment, it goes away. Um, and you get a little, uh, one out of 1,000 people get a little skin irritation at their earlobes. You know, there's nothing long-lasting in terms of a side effect. Well, how many of you have seen this sort of picture in maybe a women's magazine or some sort of a pamphlet that you got at the doctor's office or something? Um, most of us, I mean, this is, this is uh, the kind of thing that, that I learned in my, my nursing program, but now it seems to be that consumers of pharmaceuticals really know what this is about because that's how chemicals work. If you take, if you take a uh, Prozac or a Zoloft or something like that, what happens is that, that it works right there at the synapse, right, where the, the neuron connects. Well, actually, when we look at the entire function of the neurological system, that chemical synapse is about 2% of neuronal activity. So the medications that we are taking and that are being prescribed act on about 2% of neuronal activity. 98% of neuronal activity happens to be electrical. So the old way of thinking about this is that 
is that um, if you have a certain um, receptor on a neuron that has a certain shape, let's say this is the receptor, and you have a chemical that has this shape, it's called the lock and key, right? And then that unlocks the informational substances of the cell and, and we get better functioning. Well, that, that's kind of old news. In the 21st century, what we're looking at is frequency. So just like, um, um, I'll give you an analogy. So we can stimulate a receptor by frequency, just like unlocking your car door. What do you, you know, when I first started using uh, automobiles, I had to have a key to get into the car door or to, to start the ignition. What happens now? Right? You push a button, there's a frequency that goes into um, that mechanism and it unlocks your car. And so the same thing is happening with electrotherapy. It happens that there are frequencies that if, if a frequency is coming toward that, um, that receptor and it matches the frequency of the receptor, it actually will unlock those informational substances. So we can actually get increases in serotonin and all kinds of things through uh, frequency. Now our alpha stim, um, this is the waveform actually of, of the alpha stim unit where the, I said that you put an ear clip here and you put an ear clip here and that waveform goes through the limbic system. This is what that waveform looks like. And there's a little spike on the waveform. So typically people will feel a little tingle at their ears when they have the alpha stim on because the frequency and the amplitude is so low, it's actually bioidentical to what our body's frequency is. So that it, it's so low that um, the skin is a barrier to that. So there has to be a little spike on that waveform. So you might feel just a mild tingle in the ear um, as that waveform is initiated and then, it, and then it goes from one earlobe to the other, passing through there. The other thing that's really um, interesting about our waveform is that there are thousands of discrete frequencies embedded within what are called those pulse envelopes. And they're also very irregular. You, you won't see a con constant, you know, like a, you know, here, 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 here. It goes here, 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 here. And the body doesn't accommodate to that. So um, we have um, the same response that, that a person has the day that they use the alpha stim will be the same response that they have 10, 15, 20 years from now because the body doesn't accommodate to that. And there's an accommodation that happens when we get the same chemical or the same um, waveform. Have you you've heard of TENS units? Anybody know what a TENS unit, unit is? OK, those, that's really um, older technology that had some benefit, but it's a very consistent waveform. And so eventually what would happen is that the body would sort of say, OK, I know what that is. It's, it's, it's kind of distracting me from my pain. And eventually you'd have to turn it up and turn it up and turn it up until the muscles would actually jump and contract because your body would accommodate to that. Um, with our waveform or with the alpha stem waveform, um, there is no accommodation. So this is um, Dr. Saul. Rosenthal, who is a psychiatrist who um, wrote the book Winter Blues. So he was the one that actually um, gave the diagnosis of seasonal affective disorder. Does anybody have that? I do. OK. You ever feel like around Aug October, you're sort of wanting to sleep a lot and feel really drowsy in, the, in certain times during the day? Um, uh, I certainly have that. And um, what he did was he, he took um, medical students and used alpha stim with them and said, well, how did you feel? And most of them, you can read you know, what they said, was that um, it felt really quite pleasant. 
bright, no worry, increased energy, improved sleep, that kind of thing. So that's kind of the way we want to feel, right? Now, when we initiate the alpha stem and you put it on and someone kind of is adjusting the level that they like, some people will feel really light right away, right away. They just kind of get this boost of feeling light and kind of energetic. Like I've heard people tell me, you know, I could go home and vacuum my whole house. You know, <laughs> they just feel this really um, initial boost. Now there are some people who get so groggy and kind of euphoric that even if I'm talking to them, they'll just sort of go, I know your mouth is moving, but I have no idea what you're saying because they're just in that kind of zone, I call it. So there may, there may be that reaction at first, but eventually, no matter how people initially respond to the treatment, eventually get, they get to a real light feeling where there's no brain fog, they feel really mentally clear and um, they feel energetic, sort of like they've had, like you've awakened from a nap. Now, the problem is, is that when people feel kind of heavy and euphoric um, from the treatment, they sometimes say, oh, I don't like that feeling. I don't, I don't like that. Some people like it, but other people say, no, that's, it's just not me. I don't feel like I'm myself. You should not stop during that time. You should just encourage what I do is encourage my patients to just kind of go with it for a while because they will start to feel more and more clear and less groggy as time goes on. Um, and that's one of the, the um, kind of cautions is that if you interrupt that session at that time, you might feel kind of foggy for a while. So we don't encourage people to, to do that. Turning the intensity down will um, decrease that feeling, that little euphoric feeling. So there are many um, proposed theories for how this works. Um, one that's not necessarily proposed is that we know that it'll increase the um, alpha brainwave state. So alpha brainwaves are those brainwaves that we get when we're in a very meditative state. Um, it also will, this analgesia part, that blue arrow down there that says analgesia, so um, people often find that while they're having the treatment that they just kind of don't feel like, for instance, um, my experiences with acupuncture. If I have my cranial electrical therapy going at the time that I have acupuncture, I just don't even feel those little, those little even though they're minor, you know, if you had acupuncture, there's just a little bit of a cringe factor, when, especially when they're moving those needles around. If I have the alpha stem on, I don't feel that at all. I'm just like, do it, do it, whatever. Do it, go ahead. Um, we have studies going on right now. Um, most of our studies are done at the VA um, and the, the Department of Defense, and there's one study going on with people who are having cataract surgery and using the alpha stem, and I think that that would be very, very beneficial uh, for people because, you know, the, I, I just had cataract surgery, so I'm like, I had it, I put it on beforehand, but they, they don't give you any, um, any sort of anesthetic. You get a little Valium. And I was like really surprised. I'm like, well, you're gonna cut into my eye and you're just giving, giving me a little bit of Valium? It's really kind of a trip to have somebody cut into your eye while you're just, sitting there, you know? It's like, I wish I had asked them. If I, I just didn't want to talk to the doctor and say, well, I've got this alpha stem and whatever. I thought maybe just having it up uh, beforehand. But it does create this analgesia issue. So you can have, um, let's say, a chiropractor that has maybe a difficult time adjusting people. If you have the alpha stem on, the adjustment goes m much more quickly because people are not guarded. They're just sort of like, OK, do that. On um, decreased arousal and agitation, and I'll show you some of the research that we have about that. But um, oftentimes, when I've treated people, they've 
come in and they had some kind of an irrita irritating thing happen, you know, maybe somebody said the wrong thing to them or they got a telephone call that was, that was really um, just unpleasant. And they'll, after the treatment, they'll say, you know what, I was really ramped up before I had this treatment. And now it's like, you know, I just don't care. I just don't care. So those are, are some of the things that we find with uh, the brain wave changes with alpha stim. And how do we know that people produce more alpha? Well, uh, this is a grad um, study that was done at, um, I think it was North Texas State University. And this gentleman uh, took 30 students treated them with 20 minutes of cranial electrical therapy and did their um, QEEG, quantitative EEG, so looking at the brain from 19 different channels and took a look at them before and after. And what we see is that people um, generate a whole lot more alpha brain wave and they also produce less of what we call delta. Delta is um, our deep sleep. It's the lowest brain wave that we have. Point one to 3.5 hertz. So you'd think, well, why would somebody be producing delta brain waves? And these are college students, you know? They stay up really late, they don't get enough sleep, and it's after lunch, and <laughs> what happens when you're in, when you're in a, a lecture that's kind of boring? You know, they're nodding off. And so, so what we see is a decrease in that delta brain wave and an increase in alpha. And uh, so get rid of the sleepy brain waves, get into the relaxed brain waves, and what we see is that actually the delta pops up where it should be um, in the middle of the night, stage four sleep. So it has kind of a normal, not only an effect 20 minutes after, but we'll see even you know, 12 hours after that it's actually normalizing the architecture of, of brain waves. This is what a, it's called functional MRI. And a, with a functional MRI, what we're doing is looking at the brain not still, but as it's working. And um, the analogy is, is that you could look at your engi the engine of your car, you know, put the hood up and look at, you could look at it with it, the engine off, or you can look at it with the engine running. And a functional MRI is like looking at the engine while it's running. And what we see is that there will be decreases in activity in the anxiety centers of the brain, before and after. And the other validating thing for what I've just said is that um, the FDA says that we can um, that this is cleared for anxiety, depression, insomnia, and pain. And, well, why? You know, we know that it produces alpha brain waves and so on and so forth. But if you take cerebral spinal fluid, you do a spinal tap after someone has 20 minutes of this treatment, and you test to see if there's what their um, endorphins are, we'll see an increase in 98% in um, or 219% in cerebral spinal fluid and 98% in blood plasma. So endorphins are those feel good. It's like, you know, when people run a marathon, they feel great because they have more endorphins. And um, serotonin. Uh, we'll also see increases in serotonin, which is um, another chemical that we all are very familiar with because what happens when we have depression? low serotonin, right? So those are some of the, um, what we call, you know, some of the, the proposed mechanisms or the theories of how this works and, and some of the data that we've collected. Now there are contraindications and if someone has a pacemaker, or some sort of spinal stimulator or an implantable device that can't be turned off, then we don't recommend that they use alpha stem because we don't know if our waveform would interfere with that. There's, there are no studies. Sometimes we've had people, I have had patients call 
their um, pacemaker company and say, it's the alpha stem, it's 0.5 hertz, you know, can I use it with, with my pacemaker? And some will say yes and other uh, pacemaker companies will say no. And we, it has not been studied uh, in preg with pregnant women. And so, again, we don't want to do, you don't want to take aspirin. You don't want to take Tylenol when you're pregnant. So we just, since it hasn't been studied, it doesn't mean that it's, it's not, uh, that it's harmful. It's just that it has not been studied. I already talked about the um, side effects. Uh, the one thing that I didn't talk about is a little vertigo or um, dizziness. So if people have a, a tendency toward that, um, I guess I did talk a little bit about motion sickness, but um, about three out of a thousand people will, will just say, you know, this isn't for me. I just get too woozy. You know, I just, I get too spinny from it. Um, there are ways that we can adapt the the alpha stim, and I can show you that a little bit later so that people who have that sensitivity can still get a, a treatment. But they can't use the ear clips. Uh, we have um, 42 anxiety studies, 27 insomnia studies, uh, and 26 depression studies. And all of the studies are done independently, which means that the company doesn't pay for any of the studies. Um, and that's really important that, that we don't, that there isn't a funding uh, for the studies. And um, most of the studies are now, like I said, um, done at the VAs or the Department of Defense or universities. And um, <clears throat> there are double blinding cap um, capacities. So what happens is that our, uh, the electromedical products will donate units for a study, and they will have the units um, um, either a, one that looks like it's operating, but it has no waveform. So it looks exactly like, yes, there's a timer. I can put it on 20 minutes, or I can put it on an hour, um, but you can't adjust it. And the other group who has the active um, treatment will only have the very minimal amount of dosing, which is 100 micrograms. So they wouldn't ramp it up till they feel anything. It would just be at the very, very lowest level, which means that you can get a treatment, but you really can't feel it. So that's how they double blind uh, the studies. So with um, it, the alpha stim will treat um, trade anxiety. So again, that would be, um, or situational anxiety, that would be stuff like if you have anxiety uh, because you know, you're getting an injection or people who are going through chemotherapy might have situational anxiety because they don't like to be confined, that kind of thing. I know um, there's a physician, uh, Dr. Vercota, uh, in her clinic, I just heard from from her receptionist that they like to use it on kids when they do blood draws because it calms them. And I used I worked in <laughs> I my office was in uh, pediatrics, and and just down the hall was the lab, and so I would often, you know, be doing my biofeedback with people, and I'll relax and take some deep breaths, and all this kid would be screaming, you know, getting their, their blood drawn. So, um, and like I said, for, for procedures like cataract surgery, things like that. And then it also treats um, what we call chronic anxiety or trade anxiety that has other kinds of components like panic disorder or agoraphobia or, um, um, uh, obsessive compulsive disorders, things like that. Now this is a study that was done out of uh, Liberty University, which is the largest Christian uh, university in the United States. And this was published in 2013 in the Journal of Affective Disorders. And what the researcher did was take people who are, were stabilized on their medication, not having any medication changes for several months before the study or during the study. 
And the red line are the people who had the, the sham unit, the unit that didn't do anything. And then the blue line are the people that had the active treatment but didn't know that they were getting a treatment. So what happened was that 50% um, of uh, patients, or 83% of patients got a 50% or greater improvement in their, in their anxiety. And then we have a terrible problem with post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, and especially, I mean, uh, still people from Vietnam. We don't have too many World War II vets, but not, not necessarily all military, but there's a, a great, great number of people who have post-traumatic stress disorder. And this was published. This was a patient that was observed. <coughs> and the, the blue line there are is um, how many experience, what they call experiencing, so avoidance or um, re-experiencing or increased arousal. So they documented that for the month prior to using alpha stim and how many times that would happen to them in a month. And then um, in the red line is how many times they had an experience of that um, afterwards. And so they had a decrease in severity of 39% after one month of using. And in my experience, um, that can be the difference of staying home instead of going out to a movie with your kids or your spouse or going to your, your kids' band concerts, things like that. If you're always wondering if you're going to have uh, an uncomfortable episode while you're out, you just avoid going out. So can be really, really important uh, for comfort, but also all kinds of things. And uh, we also see a real decrease in uh, aggressiveness. And this is a study that was done uh, with the worst of the worst aggressive patients in the state of Texas. And the person who did this, Dr. Childs, is an aggressionologist, and he had his patients using this for an hour twice a day for, um, I think it was two, three months. And what he found was a 40% decrease in aggressive episodes, decreases in seclusions, restraints, and PRN medications. And not only that, but he saved his um, psychiatric unit $12,000 a quarter in medication costs to restrain these um, patients who are very severely aggressive they have to use um, um, cocktails of different kinds of medication that are very expensive. So that was published as well in the journal of um, some psychiatric journal. Insomnia, um, it may, it, when people generally have pain or they have anxiety, they can, they can have a very, very fast decrease in that symptom. But with insomnia, it may take it, we never know. Somebody could say that they slept um, better than they have in years and years after just one treatment, or it may take up to four weeks. But we know that, that, that it has um, a very significant effect on insomnia. We just don't quite know when it's going to happen, so stick with it. And this is a study that was done on um, fibromyalgia patients. And the, just pay attention to the blue line because that was before the study ever happened. These are the number of people that said they had little or no sleep. And then by the end of the study, the people who said that they had little or no sleep was under 10%. And with depression, again, that's one of the things that um, doesn't have an instant response like anxiety or, or pain. It takes a little bit longer, but you'll get, you'll get people who just get progressively better. Even in a week, they'll feel less depressed. In two weeks, they'll feel a little bit le even less depressed. In three weeks, and by five weeks, that's when they get their, um, their maximum benefit. And then that maintains even if they decrease their, their um, treatments to, say, 
two, three, four times a week. Um, as far as side effects go, we just have this slide just to um, show the difference between the numerous side effects that uh, antidepressants might have. Alpha stim uh, and their side effects wouldn't even be on this list because it's less than 1%. The, you know, headache, dizziness, and uh, skin irritation at the earlobes. And this was um, the Liberty University study where they looked at both anxiety and depression in those patients. And again, if you look at the blue line, you'll see a significant decrease after five weeks of an hour um, a day in the actively treated group. So the reported um, or depression was much, much improved. And these are patients who were on medication, already had therapy. You know, they were, they were treatment resistant patients. So pain management, um, you can, it can be used for acute, chronic, post-operative pain, and results are usually seen even um, with just one treatment. And there's no risk of addiction, there's no risk of accommodation, and what we see with pain relief is it just gets better over time. So the thing here that we're looking at is, you know, if your computer breaks, you know, are you going to look at the mouse or are you going to look at the PCU? You know, it's um, so much emphasis on our medical system on just looking at, you know, the joint, for instance, or the muscle, and not really looking at, at the brain. So the first thing you think of when you're, um, what is the first thing you think of when you, when you have pain? Well, most people are going to, like I said, are going to treat the area that hurts rather than thinking about the brain. I think t um, 10 years ago, I went to my first holistic um, pain conference, and the person there who's an acupuncturist at Scripps in California said that people who have chronic pain lose 10% of gray matter for every year that they're in chronic pain. That just, that was just astounding to me because what I was seeing in my patients with chronic pain is that they had cognitive problems, they couldn't keep track of things, they couldn't keep track of appointments, they were just, you know, they, they had difficulty with just doing daily activities and it wasn't, I mean certainly it was because of mobility and things like that, but a lot of it was because they just couldn't, they couldn't focus, I'm sure. Uh, Y'all can relate to, to that. Um, I think it's probably any chronic condition that you, you know, over years and years and years of having to, to adapt and cope with something that it takes so much brain energy. So um, this was a group. Uh, at, this was at the Houston VA, and this was a chronic pain program where they took 32 veterans and they brought them in to group sessions and said, you know what, we're gonna give you five different home devices. There's a little biofeedback thing that shows you how to breathe. There's, a, um, there's an audiovisual entrainment thing. I think there were um, just five different kinds of things that they could take and see if that would help them. And after, um, it didn't take long, but, and they could use Alpha Stim as well. 75% of those veterans at the end of the session said, I would have, you know, what helped you? It was Alpha Stim that helped them. And these are the results. Um, looks like uh, out of those 158 treatment sessions that they were using the Alpha Stim independently, uh, they got a 70% relief of pain, a 55% re reduction in anxiety, uh, a 40% decrease in depression, sleep looks like it was 50%, and a sense of well-being that was close to um, 70% as well. 
And again, I think that these kinds of studies are even more uh, telling of what the alpha stem can do because the person can actually adjust the level of the alpha stem that, that, that's compatible with them that they like. Uh, this is a study that shows the cumulative effect of using alpha stem for pain. So let's, this was a, an injection clinic where the doctor um, said, you know what, instead of giving you an injection, you can have alpha stem if you'd like. But we need you to come in daily for five days. And so they thought, well, he's free, you know, <laughs> you're going to charge my insurance company $3,000 for an injection. So uh, they came in, and the first, on average, they got a 42% reduction in pain. Day two, it was 50. Day three, 54. Day four, 64. And by day five, it was 75. So there is this cumulative effect that um, you have with using alpha stem. And this is a spinal cord injury study. So. Um, this was five different uh, VAs that used alpha stem on um, people who were having pain due to spinal cord injury veterans. And you can see on the top there, the red is uh, before and after. So the, the red is before and the blue is after. And then the people who, who had the sham, the little device that didn't work, didn't really get any results at all. And again, the sham group and then the open label group. So, and that was just treating the, the brain. The Alpha Stem M, which is what we're talking about now, has the ear clip capability, and we never treat the body without also treating the brain uh, with pain treatment with Alpha Stem. So it has that ability to treat anxiety, depression, insomnia, and sometimes um, what we call centrally mediated pain. So fibromyalgia is centrally mediated, um, migraine headache is centrally mediated, um, complex regional pain syndrome. So some pain conditions, um, all you need to do is do the, the cranial electrical therapy. But if there are uh, spots in the body that tend to flare up. Um, I was talking to someone just before we started here that said, you know, uh, my son was diagnosed with Lyme and there's a knee that keeps swelling up and is very painful. And so what we would do with that kind of thing, because um, swelling means inflammation, you know, you want to make sure that the pain, because it's local, it's more localized. It's not it's not centrally mediated. That's actually a joint that has, um, you know, that needs to be treated. And so what you would do with that is to do this type of thing with the, with the probes. And do, um, what we do is 10 second little bursts of, of treatment to the, to the area of pain. We also treat the opposite side. So even though there isn't any pain on that side, we want to make sure that we're that we're putting energy to, into both sides of the body. And, um, and then we follow that with cranial electrical therapy because there's an imprint of that pain in the brain. So that way we're doing local treatment, we're doing um, brain treatment as well. So you, that's why we get such good results. With something like this, with um, the, the spinal cord injury pain, we would, it would just be the ear clips. Um, migraine headache, I won't. And this is just, this is one of the slides that really made a difference to me when I first started seeing this because I know that I can help people with migraine headache if they continue to do the um, deep breathing and they learn to um, raise their hand temperature, raise their foot temperature, things like that. But it takes a while. But if you do biofeedback plus the cranial electrical therapy, you can get results faster and you can get better results. So alpha stem can be used alone, but it can be used with biofeedback. It can be used with physical therapy. It can be used, we have lots of psychologists that use it and to do um, mental health therapies things like that, and it just enhances the outcomes of those. 
The other really kind of interesting thing is um, just to demonstrate again how effective this is in um, being able to enhance even medication is that if people are using anesthesia and using the alpha stim during anesthesia, they'll require um, about a third less anesthesia. And how many people have had trouble with anesthesia? Yeah, yeah. So if we could, if we could really get this in place and, and um, have surgeons actually know about that, to be able to use 30% less anesthesia would really be helpful. And for all of you pet lovers, please just close your ears, but um, they wanted to know if they, if they gave the alpha stim along with an opiate, whether the opiate would be more effective or if they could decrease the dosage. And so they took, uh, what they did is they, they did a um, rat study where they, they heat up the tail of the rat and then when, the, when it gets hot so it's uncomfortable, the rat will flick its tail. And so what they did was they, they would then use morphine and say, okay, how long is it gonna take before that rat flicks its tail? And of course, the, the tail could be heated up a little bit more. And then they did the morphine and the alpha stim and the, the uh, rat would require 30% less of the morphine to get the same uh, pain reduction. And that is extremely important, extremely important with what's going on with our uh, problems with opiates. So even we've got dentists that are using this instead of, instead of uh, nitrous oxide and giving people an alpha stim to take home instead of, you know, the kids that are going home with, with, uh, with opiates or pain after wisdom teeth extractions. I can't tell you when I was working in, in chemical dependency how many people told me that, that, that their addiction started with a pain condition, either a tooth extraction or you know, a, you know, a fractured jaw or a low back pain or whatever, and the doctor prescribed an opiate for them, and for them, that was, they never felt better. You know, there's certain, and we don't know. We don't know what person is going to say that, you know, the opiate. I mean, I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't care for that because I don't like that feeling that an opiate would give me. But apparently, if you have that reward pathway for an opiate, um, that could be the, the entry point for an addiction. So if we can avoid, in uh, many scenarios, using something like alpha stim rather than an opiate, uh, we'd be much better off. So we took service members and um, analyzed their use of alpha stim. And the blue line is people who were already on medication. And you can see that they, you can use medication and use alpha stim and get really good results. The, when it says plus nine and plus 12, those are people who never had a med for that condition. And so what we find is that people who have never been treated with a medication and use out, um, the alpha stim in, instead actually get much better results. And we don't know why. I have some ideas about that. I think that medication actually kind of bombards the, the receptors and then they get blunted. And so it just takes, just like it takes more and more medication to give the same effect. Um, or it could be like in the case of headaches, that sometimes when people are taking a lot of meds for their headaches, you don't know whether it's a side effect from the med or whether it's, uh, that's causing it. But those people who've never taken a, a pain med um, for a headache seem to get even better results. So it's safe and it's easy to use, um, proven effective, works really quick. <laughs> It lasts, and uh, most of our our um, use, 65% of the use with or the sales with Alpha Stim, is with the VA and the Department of Defense. 
So it's being used in the um, Army Substance Abuse Program and Wounded Warriors in um, the Navy SEALs. Um, our special forces, they use it for mission readiness. They use it for um, people who are coming back from combat and have the potential of having PTSD and they, they put them in what's called a reset program. So the first week, the objective is to get people to just calm down and to sleep. And after that week, of being able to sleep better. So they'll implement alpha stim and just all massage, just calming therapies. And then week two, they might introduce them to therapy or group therapy or physical therapy or whatever. But that first week is just to get them to get their, their um, nervous system calmed down and to get them to sleep. So used in many, many areas in the, in the um, Department of Defense and the military. So, any questions that you might have? Oh. So, if you use the stimulation, let's say you have a herniated disc or you mm -hmm. have sciatica, so you can use it and it helps the pain. Mm -hmm. But then, if you don't take care of the problem, do you have to just keep using it because mm -hmm. that herniated disc doesn't go away or that mm -hmm. sciatica might stay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Usually when people have to continue to use it and use it every day, um, there's generally such a structural problem that, um, um, for instance, spinal stenosis, right? People with, with have, a, have a narrowing and the, and the spine is going through that. Well, that's potentially going to be a chronic thing and they, and they need to have the alpha stem on a really regular basis in order to control the pain just is better than taking an opiate, right? But what I've seen with even spinal stenosis and other th kinds of things like sciatica is that when we have inflammation, what happens with inflammation? It swells. It swells. Right. So let's say the nerve, let's say there's this much space, okay? And that nerve is all fluffy and inflamed. Now you, you give you're basically giving the body energy to heal. And the body's gonna produce its own anti-inflammatories. It's gonna to start to do what the body does in order to heal, right? And so if you can reduce the, the swelling and the, the inflammation, then there's a whole lot more space. So that will reduce the inflammation? Um, I've seen it do that. We aren't cleared, you know, I'm just talking now as a clinician. Um, I have seen swelling go down in front of me. Um, I had a, I was at a, uh, I was training a group of nurses at a facility, and there was a nurse there that I had a flare up of, of her RA. And she said, Usually when I get this flare up, um, I get my wedding ring off because then, you know, she doesn't want to go in and get her, have her wedding band cut. And so I used those little probes and I just, I just used it on her joint back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And she'd try it, nope, not quite. And I did it a little bit more. And it probably took seven minutes maybe and she could take her ring off. I was like, what? You know? Because it would have to reduce that inflammation for that pain to go away. So, or you'd have to take an anti-inflammatory drug, mm -hmm. which is saying you think it does. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. Um, I have um, a, a doctor in Grand Rapids who is an injection doctor, Dr. Um, Paul Olson, works with people with complex regional pain syndrome. Does anybody know that? Has anybody had that? No? Okay. Uh, complex regional pain syndrome is really, really a horrendous uh, pain. What ha it usually happens after an injury or a surgery. And um, let's say a trauma, you know, car accident or something like that. Somebody gets really banged up in the leg. And, and what happens is that the sympathetic nervous system, which is the part of the nervous system that really is the accelerator, it's really the ramp up part of the nervous system, 
somehow with some people who have a surgery or have trauma like that, the sympathetic nervous system gets turned on and it just won't turn off. And so they'll have swelling that there's no explanation for the swelling. It's the injuries, you know, this is like six months after the injury. And so, and they have um, uh, very much sensitivity. So like even a sheet on their foot will hurt, that kind of thing. And he injects people and does nerve blocks for that. And what he started to do after he got help from with his own pain was he would put the ear clips on people and not tell them he didn't, he wanted it very scientific. He didn't tell them much about what it was going to do. And he put the ear clips on, he'd say, I'm gonna go look at your films and see, decide what kind of treatment or injection I'm going to give you. And he'd let them have the alpha stem for 20 minutes and he'd come back and that limb would be, the swelling would go down. And so being the wonderful physician that he is, he would say, I'm gonna order an alpha stem for you and I want you to use it every, every day for a month and then come back and we'll see if we need to inject you. And he, he took, he reported this to his national organization um, and he was able to speak about it about four years ago. And he took patients five years prior to using alpha stem, how many injections he would treat, he would use for them. And then the five years after, 75% fewer injections and um, better outcomes. Is everybody in chess? No. <laughs> right. Now, um, Ian is here. He's, he's our um, rep here in, in uh, Minneapolis. And so if you have questions about that type of thing, um, insurance, you know, pricing, things like that. But at this point, um, insurance doesn't cover, especially for the cranial electrical therapy, the anxiety, depression, insomnia. They'll sometimes cover um, for pain, for a unit, for pain. But Medicare doesn't cover, medical assistance doesn't cover, sometimes commercial insurances, but um, you have to purchase the unit first and then um, and then submit that to your insurance company. But this has been out for 35 years. And you'd think by now that the FDA would have, uh, but you know, I mean. But no. 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 So what does the unit cost? Um, the Alpha Stim M um, retails for 1195, which is the one that does the pain and the cranial electrical. And then the Alpha Stim Aid is, 795 for the... It just keeps going, you don't have to add things or purchase more stuff, that's the one-time fee? Um, there are um, solution, you put a little conducting solution on, it's um, a bottle for $24, last two years. Um, little felts, you know, the, the supplies are very minimal. Yes? Yep. And you do the alpha stem and you're taking that. Mm -hmm. um, don't you get too much then? Well, um, how, do you, how do you regulate that? Because if, mm -hmm. if the alpha stem is making your depression better, mm -hmm. and you're on the same dose of depression medicine mm -hmm. for insomnia medicine, how would mm -hmm. that be? Well, it's pretty, it's pretty rare that anyone will actually have, um, like, a, develop a side effect because they've got too much. We don't see that happening. In theory, um, you'd think that that would happen, but we don't see it happening. And so what happens is that, let's say, um, people are on an antidepressant. And um, like, like the people that I was telling you about when the... the um, Liberty University. So 83% um, of patients had a 50% or greater improvement in their depression and their anxiety. And they could not make or didn't make any med changes. If that patient were to go back to their physician and say, you know what, 
my depression is a whole lot better now than it has been for some time. What do you think about me reducing my, my dosage? So we do see people trying to reduce their dosages um, in order to just take less medicine because they feel better. And then at that point, I don't recommend, you know, it's always up to the physician, but at that point, if they reduced a little bit and then they felt a slump, then you'd know, mm -mm, it's not worth it. It's not worth it to decrease the medication. Um, but people take, um, what I see more often are um, people decreasing their um, pain medication use, and it's usually over the counter. Yeah, so if you don't. That's, that's if your pain is less, then you take Correct. If your depression is less, you don't have to mess with your depression. No. Or you don't mess with your insomnia. Mm -mm. Right. <coughs> We, it's, it's very, I've been doing this for 15 years, and the, the, um, the only time I had a patient that used alpha stem and she was on Zoloft and she was 83 years old, and she got to feeling kind of euphoric. And so they had to decrease her Zoloft medication uh, because it was, it was distracting to be euphoric all the time. And so that, that's the only time. And I can imagine that, you know, with people of that age group, you have to be more careful and their livers don't work as well, their kidneys don't work as well. But um, I haven't actually seen anyone have an adverse reaction. Um, but if you did, you'd want to go to your doctor and say, you know, I'm using alpha stim and it, it you know, the theory is, is that it could enhance that medication. Uh, what do you Dr. think? This isn't biofeedback. This is electrotherapy stimulation. So won't think of it as biofeedback. No, no. So will they work with you? I mean, if you say, I am on this, will they say, oh, yes, let's see what happens? Or will they say, well, I won't even advocate. I won't work with you. Some doctors will say, you go do that because I want nothing to do with it and you're not my patient anymore. Mm -hmm. So what are the doctors, medical people saying? They usually look at the research and they don't have a problem with it. You know, they used to, 15 years ago, I saw, I, I saw more skepticism and more doctors saying, no, well not, you know, I don't know about it, I didn't learn about it in medical school. But now there's enough research out there that if they, if you go to your doctor and you say, and it is a prescription device, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned that. You have to have a prescription by a medical doctor, a naturopath, um, a psychologist. You have to have a prescription? Yeah, it's an FDA uh, ruling. Mm -hmm. they That's in the United States. What? Like everything else with Lyme, even though it's prescribed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right. That's in the United States and in Canada. Every place else in the world, it's over the counter. You can buy it over the counter. Oh. oh. In, if you're in New York. Hmm? Over the counter in Canada. Okay. So, how did so the United States is the it? only place. Hmm? If they don't approve of it or it's not FDA approved, how will your doctor prescribe it? It is FDA uh, cleared. It's just not paid, covered by insurance. What? Just with the prescription. I guess I've never, um, everything that I pay that's like experimental is, I never had a prescription to have to purchase it. You just have to pay for it yourself. I've never run into where you need a prescription and then. If it's off label. It is regulated by the FDA. So, mm -hmm. Because we have medical <laughs> indications. Yeah. Right. Like the, the, those other devices don't have medical indications. Yeah. yeah. What does that mean? That it's proven to... It's, it's cleared by the FDA to treat anxiety, depression, things. insomnia, and pain, which are all medical conditions. Right. So you need a, a licensed practitioner 
to write an order for mental health or a pain condition. Right, and I think her confusion is I've never had anything prescribed that then wasn't covered by insurance. So if this has to be prescribed, why is it covered by insurance? And I'm thinking, yeah. I've had things prescribed and I've taken them in and my insurance has gone, no, I don't really think you need that. You need to pay for that if you want it. So it's, you know, whether it's a medicine or something, and I think it's almost in those lines. Like, if you prescribe, like, prescribed you know, double dose of malaria on your insurance company's like, you don't have malaria, why do you need that? I'm not gonna pay for it. Right, so I think it's along the same line of the way the insurance companies work versus needing like doctor prescription for it. I still can't go in and ask for malarone on my own. I still need a prescription for it, but I also know I'm gonna pay for it. So if you had a prescription, you could go in and get the medicine right, and, and get just it. pay you for just it? pay for it, yeah. yes. There's I've been like, in the holistic route much longer than yeah. that. Uh, yeah, that's what I figured I got, I was picking up on where you were confused. It's like, I know that, I know that my insurance isn't gonna pay for kudzu. Right? I'm very aware of that, that my kudzu tincture is not going to be covered, even though I've been prescribed it. But it's like you would hope that your malarone would be paid for. But if your insurance company decides that, that that isn't a valid number, then they can make that decision. And I think it's along the same lines as the civil. Which tincture. is the one instance in which you can get reimbursement for Alpha Stem after you purchase it. You can submit a claim for reimbursement with a certificate of oh. medical necessity. Thing. So that the doctor says that it's even though it, it doesn't fall within the, um, the same parameters as a prescription for XYZ drug or whatever, um, that it's, it's medically necessary. That there, and that's, the doctor will, will write what has been tried but hasn't worked. Okay. And then so if, if you're like cross your fingers, yeah. and then if you're lucky, um, we've seen <laughs> between like 200 and 700 dollars back on the device that costs 1200. Is it, 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 it's one of your taxes? Is it tax deductible for medical? Oh, yeah. yeah, and it's also, um, um, you can use your um, flexible spending account dollars too. Yeah, because it's not covered by insurance, so just like Band-Aids, you know, you can put that on your flex spending card. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you think that the, really the origin or what is contributing to your depression would make a difference in the effectiveness of it? Because I did try Alpha Stem, and I may not have tried it for long enough, and I may be in a different place now where it may be more effective. I'm not sure, but but you know, a lot of us have have thyroid and adrenal issues. Yes, are yes. Not optimal. Uh, so our cells are right. because of the inflammation that's chronic. Right. You know. Good point. I don't know this, that this is what I'm getting hung up on. Is you know, I think you would still need to really work on. Oh yeah. Trying to get the inflammation down. Absolutely. The depression to really lift. Doing mm -hmm. this alone isn't going to change anything if mm -hmm. you're not going to right. work on the cellulars. Right. You know, if you have a nutritional deficiency, mm -hmm. for instance, um, that, or a thyroid condition that's causing, causing um, the, you, you have a biological and a chemical component to, to that. Yeah, then then that's probably why Alpha Stim works in 80% of people and 20% it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Because there's something else going on. They just haven't gotten to that point in the journey where they've uncovered that. You know, Correct. That stone is the only, that's the other piece of the puzzle. Right, right. And, and for me, it's almost diagnostic. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like if, if, if I see 99 people for osteoarthritis and I treat their knees and they walk out of my office pain free and then I, I spend 10 minutes working with somebody and their pain does not shift. I'm thinking there's something else going on here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a simple matter or it's not, well, not, yeah, I mean, really it, Because, mm -hmm. you know, as you, as you progress and you learn more and you're doing different things, it's always that synergistic effect where you're doing more right. things that work together. I know, I know. And people say to me all the time, was it this or was it that? You know, or, you know I did these things together and I'm like, well, who, you know, you're better, right? <laughs> you know, it is synergist. I mean, a lot of things are synergistic. You know, you can start a yoga class and do alpha stim at the same time. 
and oh my gosh, you know, you're you're probably going to really benefit from both. So have you seen live patients? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, in what arenas that have, have they found the most help with the ultrasound, the Lyme patients? Well, um, pain, for one thing. If there's a if there's a pain issue, insomnia issues, um, anxiety, depression. I mean, all of the indications. It just depends. Um, I have a very close friend um, who um, was very very ill with Lyme for for many years and um, in fact <laughs> her son is now uh, going to be 16 and they're and they're telling him um, you know you're gonna have to really study because we used your you know we used your college fund so that I could get better um, you know so I I know that journey, and she's, she has an alpha stim unit, and she also has migraines, and so now she uses it mostly for migraines, mostly for um, if she's under a lot of stress, you know, she'll use it for anxiety, like she just had a move recently, and things like that. But basically, in the beginning, she was using it just to feel a little bit better as she was, and it can, you know, when you get the anxiety down, then it's a little bit easier to evaluate, right? If the anxiety is really hard, high, it's really hard to even think, you know, and I can re make and better make better, and I recall her, um, you know, at one point in time, you know, sometimes, sometimes you don't know whether it's working or not, but, um, but she said, you know, I used the alpha stim, and then all of a sudden it was like, within a day or two, it was like, like this idea that she had, I need to do this. I need to, I need to get on top of this. And so she, it, it helped her to sort of clarify instead of, there are a hundred things that I could do, or there are 200 doctors that I could see, or, or whatever, you know, it was, it's overwhelming. When you can calm down and rest and sleep, you know, at least the Shade gets pulled up for a while, and you can have a little bit more clarity. Um, what about is there any studies with seizures? No, and it's not. It's not. Um, it's seizure neutral, so we don't see that it helps or that it um, worsens, and so it's not a contraindication, which really scared me at first when I started using this with people with epilepsy. I was like. I'm putting electricity into your brain. I hope you don't have another seizure, you know? Yeah, for sure. No, and, and I would, you know, hear the same thing 10 times, call my clinical support. Are you sure? <laughs> Are you sure? Um, but. Yeah. Mm -mm. It's interesting with how it doesn't, it doesn't seem, the medicine seems to be affected. I wonder if it has something to do with more of the electrical mm -hmm. synopsis or how you were saying that mm -hmm. it makes more of that. Mm -hmm. Because I don't see how it couldn't elevate mm -hmm. the medicine. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I have an answer for that. Okay. It was your question. Yeah. About, you know, if you are on a med, you're, that med is doing something chemically to your body so that if you add alpha stem, that's, you know, will, will it produce it? Will it produce more? Yeah. Will you, maybe if you're on an opiate, would you have a higher chance of an overdose or something like that? But no, it doesn't happen because the interesting thing about the waveform and how it interacts with the cells is that it's only normalizing cell activity. Okay. So if a perfectly healthy person, a, you know, if Adam and Eve <laughs> yeah, used the alpha stem, nothing would happen. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So if the cell function is starting to uh, become natural, as, as you know, the, the cell, cells all have natural ability to heal, regeneration, function the way they should. Mm -hmm. That 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 uh, receptor, that um, re that neurotransmitter producer, is not going to start producing more neurotransmitter because it's because the receptor site is already uh, appeased. It already 
is getting what it needs to get. Regulated almost like yep. it's supposed to be. So and some people have way too high of elf activity. It's very, very rare. But the doctor, Dr. Marksbury, who made the slides and is down in Texas there, he said that the only the, the very few instances that he ran, ran into um, over alpha production, that, that those people actually were down regularly. Mm -hmm. So most of us, 99% of us, have low alpha activity. And alpha stiff increases it, and we call it alpha stiff. But for those very you know, rare instances where someone's having more, too much alpha activity, alpha stiff actually brings it down. So, Right. I'm not sure. Um, the alpha brainwave state, you know, is a, is a certain um, meditative kind of brainwave state. And I'm not sure. I think that, it, that um, chemically, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I see. As long as your doctor's okaying the, the use of it for other family members, it's just fine. We have a distributor in um, North Carolina that works with a pediatric neurologist, and um, they work with a lot of families with autistic, autistic children. And the, um, the physician says get one unit and you can all use it. So siblings use it, the parents uses it, the autistic kid uses it, and it's, it's just that, it, that um, you have to have clearance from the physician to say that you're okay to use it in our, um, or the psychologist, so in our, in our country. But that's one thing, I mean, you can't share your, you know, you can't share your Percocet. <laughs> you, you can go to jail for that, <laughs> you know, but, but um, yeah, Alpha Stim is okay. We can take one more question. Okay. Anybody else have one more question? Are you good? All right. Well, I would like to. Oh, what, Sherry? Oh, so thank you so much You're for welcome. being here. This was wonderful. Yeah. Can we give thank my you. little hand? Round of applause. And Ian, thank you for coming. We really appreciate everybody being here. I see yeah. a lot of new faces that I haven't seen here before, so we're so happy to have you all here. Um, we're, you know, we're here every other month doing a speaker meeting, per, um, and then on the opposite months we have support meetings. We have a great website, minlime.org. Go out there anytime. Um, if you ever want to join us in helping to spread the word around Minnesota and such, um, there's a volunteer section on there. We're always looking for people to help. We're a small uh, organization. We're all volunteer. So um, if you have any energy or if you have somebody that lives with you that has some more energy that would like to help, that would be awesome. But really, thank you so much for being here and I hope that you all have a wonderful September and you all feel well. And I'm guessing if, you, if anybody else has any personal questions, Marlene can answer those for you, okay? Sure. Thank you so much, everybody. Yeah, thank you.